how to present the En-ROADS baseline. I'm gonna give you the simple version and the deeper version. One note along the way though, just wanna note that when we say baseline, we're not talking about our prediction of the most likely future. We don't do forecasts and predictions. Instead, think of it as a reasonable starting point for model experimentation so you can learn about the effects of different things, different actions in the system. It is a reasonable starting place that is a pulling together of all the current policies that we see in place around the world without any strengthening. All right, here we go. Here's the simple beginner version. If you have less time, uh, you want to keep it simple. Welcome. Here is our baseline in En-ROADS. And you can see over on the left, there's a graph that shows what's going on with energy, the global sources of primary energy. So 2000 to 2100, the brown area is all the energy from coal. On top of it is energy from oil, from natural gas in blue, renewable energy, wind and solar in that expanding wedge that is green, bioenergy, and then on top in light blue is nuclear. If that's where we get all of our energy, and you think of all the carbon dioxide emissions that come from burning the coal oil and the gas, and add in other gases, methane, nitrous oxide, and the fluorinated or F gases, that gives you the graph on the right. This is the total emissions, greenhouse gas net emissions, growing over time, slowly leveling out. This is the pollution that causes global warming. If that pollution happens into the future, as in this scenario, then we get a temperature rise of 3.3 degrees above pre-industrial or 6.0 Fahrenheit. Okay, that's where things are headed. Now, let's make some changes in the model. So that's the short version that you can offer. Now, after that, you could also add in more. So, so here's some more that you can add in if you want to go a little bit deeper and explain to people some more. All right, so what's behind the biggest source of carbon dioxide emissions? Well, let's look at this view called the Kaya graphs. In the Kaya graphs, you can see the main drivers of carbon dioxide emissions from energy over on the far right. It shows some of our key assumptions. Global population rises steeply and then balances out, reaching around close to 11 billion people by the end of the century. Then there's GDP per capita, goods and services produced at the global economy uh, over time, rising steeply. There's the little COVID blip you can see right there. Multiply the two together and you get global GDP, our gross world product. This next factor is the energy intensity of GDP. How many exajoules of energy does it take to deliver a trillion dollars of GDP? And it's falling over time as we get more efficient technologies and we transition from manufacturing to a service economy. Multiply those three things together and you get overall energy use on Earth going into the future. The next factor, carbon intensity. How much carbon dioxide is emitted per unit of energy? It's falling over time as we have a little less coal and oil and gas relative to the growth in renewables and nuclear. So we're dropping the overall carbon intensity. Multiply all four of those together and you get CO2 emissions from energy, rising initially and then leveling out over time. All right, so those are the drivers of CO2 emissions, but we want to add in and look at the other emissions as well. The best graph for that would be this net greenhouse gas emissions by gas. View it larger and you can see that dark black area in the middle. Those are the CO2 emissions from fossil fuels that we were just looking at the drivers of. Underneath land use CO2, we're adding to it there from bioenergy affected by afforestation, but it's also from deforestation and land degradation. That's all in green. Above it are those F gases I mentioned, methane in blue, and then nitrous oxide in purple. We can also look at the methane here 
as a single line and we can look at the nitrous oxide and we can look at those fluorinated gases, the three main ones, SF6, PFCs, and HFCs. Those are the main ones. The next thing you could mention is that there is an important feedback loop that's, that exists in the model, which is as temperature goes up, the growth rate of overall global GDP gets decreased a little bit because of all of the impacts of climate change on the infrastructure of the economies and the capacity to deliver goods and services around the world from drought and flood and extreme weather events and migration and all that that's happening there. We can see that impact by going here to gross world product. If there was no impact of temperature on the growth of GDP, the gross world product would have followed that dotted line. But instead, there is an impact. So the result is down here at this other level. So this is now built in to the baseline. You can go turn it off, but it is in this baseline. Next thing you could mention is that if we have this 3.3 degree future, there are many impacts that you can look at. Click on impacts and one can go look and see at sea level rise. You can go look at things like crop yield effects, etc. There are many of these impacts that you can explore. You could also add that we compare our baseline against other modeling teams estimates and forecasts for uh, what implemented policies might look like. We do that in particular in this diagram from the most recent IPCC study that we call AR6. It is a figure called SPM5 and it shows when you put together many models from around the world and their estimate of where greenhouse gas emissions would go if you factor in all the implemented policies. You can see from 2000 to 2100, this red line is the middle line for the implemented policies with some ranges of this orange or orangish pink range here, and then a wider range with a percentile of 5% to 95%. So that's where many scientists around the world think implemented policies would lead greenhouse gas emissions to go. So we compare our results against theirs. The results you just saw show the dot, the blue dot here in 2030 and in 2050 and 2100. So you can see that we are at the upper end, but within the range of all the of these other models around the world. Another comparison that might be helpful is to look at our comparison against three particular integrated assessment models that we looked at. GCAM out of the lab called PNNL here in the United States, Remind Magpie out of Potsdam Peak in Germany, and Message Globiome out of IASA in Austria. Those are the results you see here for their estimate of greenhouse gas emissions. And we compare ourselves against theirs. And here is our baseline, slightly higher in particular because we look at and we count and model uh, bioenergy so differently than they do. That's one of the reasons that we're higher. When we exclude bioenergy, we are much more close to those other models. And we notice that when you look at this view version, the difference between En-ROADS and the other models over time is not much greater than the difference between those three scenarios themselves. All right, overall, this is the way to tell the story of the baseline, either at a simple level or at a deeper level. I hope this was helpful. Go get them.